What is up, my friend? Today I'm going to show you how I made this and this. Before we get started, make sure you have Automatic 1111 installed on your PC. If you need a tutorial on how to do so, click this right here. Now without further ado, let's get started. Now I'm pretty sure the music that I used for this is going to be flagged for copyright on YouTube, but it doesn't matter because we want to see the animation, right? So this, this is it. Let me restart it. So I made this using Automatic 11.11, obviously. And to get it synced up to the audio, I used Parsec. Now, if you're not familiar with Parsec, it is pretty fucking revolutionary, to be honest. So Parsec stands for Parameter Sequencer. So this will allow us to do so many different things. But we're going to keep it simple for this tutorial, because that's what I did for my video. A there are so many different things you can do that it actually can be overwhelming. First off, you want to set the BPM of the parameter to that of the song that you are going to be using. So in this case, the BPM was 150. I wanted to do half time. So I went to 75 and then 20 FPS and then the total amount of frames, 521. It's a very short video. So I have here five different prompts. Initially, with the song, I envisioned a referee just kind of screaming into a microphone. And then as soon as the bass drops, I wanted him to like kind of melt into like a skeleton. And then from there, I want it to just kind of be, I wanted it to be a little bit more of like a abstract, like psychedelic vibe. I wanted a lot of lights, skeletons, and just kind of crazy shit. And then, so here you can sync the prompts to the frames that you want. And you can do that by, you can actually use this timeline here, and then you can actually add the song in the audio reference portion. And this will allow you to sync the keyframes. Then once you get the keyframes generated, it's actually pretty easy. You can use event detection, and then you can just detect events. So this will give you kind of a base framework to work on. It is recommended you, you use stems from the audio to break up the audio tracks. It would make it much easier. I did not go that route because I wanted to do it very simply. I wanted every beat, I wanted there to be some change in the animation. And so for that, I synced the keyframes to every beat. So every kick and every clap, I wanted there to be change in the animation. So you can hear, So it didn't do a very good job. There's a lot going on in this, in this track. So I had to just go in every beat to sync it. And I'm pretty sure there's an easier way to do that. However, I am still getting the hang of this. So you can hold shift and click on a keyframe to get rid of it. Or you can hover over where you want the keyframe and then just double click and that will add the keyframe. So it's pretty easy to do. It just it's a little bit more time consuming. And then once you get all the keyframes, just go into keyframe generation, name it whatever you want. So for this, I named it kick and then just click generate. Now, once you have your keyframes created, you will now have access to all the keyframes and their values. So there are a few ways you can go about automating your animation. So you can see we have the kick in the info. I also have this wub tag. This is from when I tried to interpolate the Z axis translation and it did not go well with the function I was trying to use. So I just kind of scrapped it and then just animated the strength, which is what we are going to do here. So if you're unfamiliar with strength, it's the amount of difference in between the current frame and the previous frame. So if there's a high strength, they are going to match pretty, pretty closely. If there's a low strength, the current frame is not going to match up as well to the previous frame. So you get a lot of variation and that's where you really want to find the balance. If they're too coherent, you're not going to notice really any difference. If you have a low strength, you're going to have a lot of variation and it kind of gets 
a little chaotic. So you want to find the perfect balance. Usually around 0.8 is like the sweet spot. So that's what we're going to stick with. So the base strength is eight. And then we also have a function here. And this is an if function. So if, I'm gonna explain this if you're unfamiliar with coding terminology, which I'm not too fluent myself, but. So this is basically saying if the frame, the current frame is equal to the info, if the, ma if the info matches the last kick, then do 25. So if the current frame lands on a kick keyframe, drop the strength down to 25. So we're getting a lot of variation. If not, use a step, which is the line essentially. So instead of like a sine wave where it kind of curves, a step is like a jagged, like, like this. <laughs> it goes, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you. So you can see, and it, it's dark mode, so you can't really see the purple. So let me just go to light mode. Ah! So you can see that it just dips down one frame. So here we are at 0.8, it's a kick, so it drops down to 0.25, and then that's where you get a lot of variation. So as soon as it kicks, the animation changes, goes back up to eight, kicks, animation changes, goes back up to eight, kicks, so on and so forth. You can kind of play with that too. You can even like play with these, but I don't want to do that because it just screws it all up. So yeah, once you get that, you can see there's a bunch of other stuff you can automate a lot of stuff you can do with this but you can do a lot with just this one function for what we're doing it is enough and that got us this as i have showed you every time it kicks it transforms into something different and it still uses prompts that i have here and i have synced the prompts to the music in a sense so as i mentioned the intro is a referee holding a microphone screaming and then i also later on decided i wanted him to kind of morph into a skeleton so i added the same prompt but i added skeleton gore and fire and then it just gets into like crazy weird shit from there i just plopped that into premiere pro and added a lot of post-processing so that looks like this so it adds a lot more oomph to it a lot that i couldn't do in the actual generation so you can see i added let me mute so you can see i added some zoom with the intro and then as soon as it started transitioning into the base i added like a red strobe light and then a transition and then it kind of morphs into a skeleton and then i added that little z translation on every kick to aid in the animation change and let's zoom in here a little bit more it's probably too much so there are a few transitions i added we'll go over them real quick now I'll also include a download link to all of these transitions in the Tyrant Empire Discord. So if you're interested in joining and want to get your hands on these, check the description down below. So we have the lens distortion that I wanted on every wub. So you can see that it just really emphasizes the ooh. So I put the strobe light on an adjustment layer to go with the drums a little a little bit and then at the same time I have the camera fly effect to add some chaos to it and then to transition into the beat and then I added some light flares where did my cursor go I added some light flares in the with the exposure transition and then I added this to every kick just to give it a little bit of a flash just really emphasizes the punchiness of the kick. The last effect is the RGB shake. Now I added this to the end of the four bars and there's a lot of frequency modulation in the track to just give it more variation. And it, I, I feel like that fits it really well. Just kind of like a little chaotic feel to it. Then other than that, all I did was throw the watermark on it, 
throw a cross dissolve at the end and a constant power at the end of the audio track as well just to smooth it out and finish it off so once i finished up in premiere pro i exported it and then imported it into topaz so i can upscale it to a 1920 by 1080p or rather 1080 by 1920 the vertical orientation and then i bumped it up from 20 fps to 60 fps to make it a lot more easy on the eyes and then it also makes it look a lot smoother, less flashy. Very good tool. So hopefully you found this workflow very insightful. I hope that you've learned something and can actually implement some of the techniques. Click the link below to join the Tyrant Empire Discord. It's a private Discord, invite only, but link is down below if that interests you. Definitely post your work. I wanna see what you create. And if you have any other ideas or feedback on videos like this, definitely let me know in the comments below. I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much.